40. Calculate the delta G notch for each of the following reactions from the equilibrium constant at the temperature given. Okay, cool. So we have this balanced equation. We have methylamine, CH3, NH2 aqueous, plus water, H2O, and we will yield CH3, NH3 plus, plus hydroxide ion, OH minus. Seems like this is an acid-base reaction. But for this problem, who cares? We're at room temp, right, 25 degrees Celsius, with a Kp value of 4.4 times 10 to the negative fourth. We need to find out what that delta G is from an equilibrium constant. Now, if you have equilibrium constants, capital Ks, and you have delta Gs, there's really only one formula that you have to memorize, right? Two variations, depending on what you're solving for. In this case, we're solving for delta G, so it's easiest to just use this formula right here. It's delta G equals negative R times T times the ln of K. Here is your equilibrium constant. Now, I didn't specifically write down what K to use because you could use any one of them. There's so many. KAs, KBs, KC, KEQ, KP, right? Um, yeah, KSP. <laughs> so in this case, we're going to use the 4.4 times 10 to the negative fourth. Now we just need to know what the R value is and what the temperature is, capital T. Well, the R value is a constant value. That's why they're not going to give it to you. We have to memorize that it's 8.314 if we're using this formula. If we're using 8.314, the units are joules per mole times Kelvin. But it's Kelvin, not Celsius. So in order for me to use the temperature, I have to convert this Celsius into Kelvin. Celsius to Kelvin, that's plus 273. More specifically, it's plus 273.15. So room temp, it's like ingrained in my mind, it's 298. So if I add those two together, I get 298.15. And that's the number that's going into my temperature. Okay, everything's accounted for. Let's write it all out. Delta G equals, the negative is in the formula, so I gotta keep it there, 8.314. Then I'm gonna times by the temp, so that's 298.15. And then I'm gonna do ln of the 4.4 times 10 to the negative fourth. If you're using a TI, you can just plug all this in into one single step in the calculator and it will understand what functions to do at what time. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Negative 8.314 times the 298.15. And I'm gonna times by my natural log, which is over here. And now I have, an, I have a number in scientific notation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say 4.4, and then I'm going to say second comma. The E button comes up, the EE. This means times 10 to the. So it's 4.4 times 10 to the. Now all I have to do is just add that exponent, negative 4, close the parentheses, and press enter. And there you go. 19,158. The units is the units that did not cancel out, so this would be joule per mole. But since this is such a big number, the standard unit for delta G is in kilojoule per mole. So even though they didn't state it, it's good practice to always throw your delta G in into kilojoules, because chances are that the multiple choice, if it's a multiple choice question, they're gonna be in kilojoules. Joules to kilojoules divide by 1,000. So I'm just gonna take my answer, divide by 1,000, and now I'm gonna use the correct number of sig figs. Correct number of sig figs, you use a lot of sig figs for the Kelvin, only, four, only two here. So my answer can only have two sig figs, so that would be 19. And yeah, we're good. I'm just gonna pull this a little closer and you're done. So it's 19 kilojoules per mole. Cool. Thank you so much. I really hope this helped. If you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. It literally only takes one second and it just shows, you know, my, to me and my brother that you guys are supporting us, but you know, but you're supporting my watching the video. So thank you. All right. We're almost at 25,000 subscribers and it's all because of you guys. So we really do appreciate you. This channel would be nothing without you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I will talk to you soon. Have an awesome day. Bye-bye.